First of all, it's an exciting day for the Cowboy football program. We added five players uh, today, so the total number of student athletes that we have signed this year are 24. Um, during the course of uh, you know our developing our recruiting matrix, we wanted to have the lion's share of our class signed on the early signing date, and then have uh, a certain number of scholarships left. And I think our staff did an excellent job as far as going out and identifying guys of positional need that were going to be important for us to um, uh, build. And then uh, the second uh, signing date was really uh, super. Sometimes you have surprises, and uh, today there were no surprises. A lot of these guys that we signed today were heavily recruited. They had a lot of options, and uh, they held to their commitments. So we're really pleased. I'm going to just go ahead and, and, and talk about a couple guys. Um, Alphabetically, uh, Alfonso Andrews, a running back out of St. Louis, uh, really an explosive player, um, you know, an excellent high school football program, and they were very successful and a heavily recruited player. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're all going to be great, but uh, he did have a lot of options. Uh, the type of back that we think is really going to be complementary uh, to our offense, which is going to be important. Alonzo Hall, uh, a big, tall uh, defensive uh, tackle prospect, uh, 6'5", 230 pounds. He does play defensive end. Uh, he runs extremely well. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, we call him Philly, and uh, we're certainly excited about him. He initially resided in Philly, so everybody calls him Philly. So it'll surprise some people every once in a while when I refer to him as Alonzo. But we're really excited about uh, Alonzo and uh, what he's going to bring to our defense. He's certainly got a lot of room to grow, and uh, we plan on adding some lean muscle mass onto him in the weight room. Uh, DeWine McNeely is a guy that we had recruited for a long, long time, a running back uh, from Modesto, and uh, really an outstanding program, a big, strong guy. We, we feel like it's important to have a complement of running backs that have uh, different uh, attributes, one of them being a big, strong guy that can uh, move the pile, but he does have a, a explosive uh, movements. Uh, he, he did uh, have an 8.4 yard per carry, something that we always look at, and he comes from a, an excellent program. So we're excited about DeWine. He visited during the early part of the year and went through the whole recruiting process, and we appreciated his commitment and holding to that. Uh, Shay uh, Sui A Uno, I think I've done pretty well on that one. Uh, athlete out of, uh, of Houston, Texas. What's interesting about Shay? was many years ago when I was a young coach at Rice uh, in the Southwest Conference. Uh, Shea's defensive coordinator was a, a player who I actually had coached at one time, and so that kind of helped with the conduit. Uh, but uh, as you can see, we've made some great inroads in the Houston area. Shea was a quarterback that had a lot of different options, and then as the recruiting process went along, uh, we really felt like it was important to be honest with him, let him know we had interest in, in, in his skill set, but would not be a quarterback. And so during the course of the recruiting process, I think a lot of schools were somewhat, um, I don't want to say dishonest, but probably not as forthright as what they should have been. And uh, so during this process, we really built up a great relationship of trust. You know, he stands about six foot two, and he's 210 pounds now. and. Those guys, uh, we have felt, have transitioned to the linebacker role extremely well. If you look at Logan Wilson, Logan played corner up in Toronto County and put on some lean muscle mass. So we're looking for athleticism, and I really want to. We also think Shea will be an excellent uh, um, special team player. Uh, Titus Swain is a running back out of Dallas, and uh, a guy that is uh, he's explosive, but he's a strong, powerful back plays in a very competitive league. Once again, you look at his numbers, they're very impressive. So we felt like it was going to be important for us to sign you know, some running backs. So we got thin last year. Uh, we lost a really talented player uh, with Nico. And so for us to sign three players at that spot is really going to be helpful. You can never have too many running backs uh, in that system. And then uh, along with that, I know much has been uh, reported already on, on Levi Williams, uh, but he's already in school. And so that was another uh, component to our recruiting class that was really going to be important. So we're pleased about that. We're also pleased to uh, you know, announce that we have uh, eight commitments of guys who are coming here as non-scholarship players. Uh, they're from the region of, uh, you know, most of them are from Colorado or Wyoming. I believe we do have one young man who's from California. 
Um, but if you uh, go outside, you'll see that we have awarded uh, 27 scholarships to guys who initially have come here without a scholarship. And so, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. We have been really, really pleased with our walk-on program, giving guys opportunities, and then, you know, rewarding those guys. So that's kind of where we're at with this class. Uh, at this time, I'll open it up to any questions anybody may have. Yes, Robert. Craig, you mentioned, you know, it's a well-rounded class that addresses needs, and, you know, every class every year is different, but does this class compare favorably to previous classes, good, bad, or different, or does this one stand out, maybe? How would you put it? It does stand out. Uh, the, the reason why I say that is, is I think we had uh, our recruiting office, uh, Mesa, had done a great job uh, directing all our coaches. There was a lot of effort that was put in on the front end, um, and what you're always looking for is just coming down that home stretch where you're at, on those scholarship numbers and then as you develop that matrix what needs are being met and what you do not want to do is compromise uh, the quality of player just because you have a need at a certain position and as a result of that I think we hit on almost all of them. I, I would think we're still a little bit light at the offensive tackle position but a lot of the other places uh, we're really pleased with you know identifying uh, defensive linemen is always important, defensive ends, safeties, corners Running backs, quarterback is always a critical uh, area, um, wide receivers. So personally, I'm really pleased. And it was a great deal of effort by the men that are in the back of the room and a lot of miles logged. And uh, so I think uh, backing another positive recruiting class is really going to help. Uh, one of our long-term goals is have uh, long-term uh, sustainability to we're not having the ebbs and flows. We're going to be a, a, you know, a consistent program in the Mountain West. Other questions? Yes. You, you mentioned the three running backs you signed and the different skill sets they have. Was that on purpose, or you went out and recruited different guys that you can use in different ways? Different roles? Some of it came into, um, you know, the guys that were available that we felt like had shown um, a competitive nature on a, their competitive high school teams. <clears throat> but then also, what we felt like was important to have, you know, some diversity in that group. Uh, you know, if you look at DeWine, you have a guy that walks in and, and it's always dangerous to compare uh, size and high school tape, but very much uh, uh, liking to Brian Hill. I know you weren't here when we had Brian, but Brian was a big, strong guy that got faster when he was here. We also feel like it's important to have some explosive guys and not just little guys that are scat back guys, but while they may not be really imposing um, with their size right now, they uh, possess great power and strength. And so we think we're really uh, happy with the three different type of backs that we have. Yes. You mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of these, these guys were, were heavily recruited um, to, not so, I mean, is it a big deal to get these guys in that had some power five offers and things like that? Is that a big deal to you? No. To that? No? <laughs> no, it's really not. I mean, uh, for us, I think anytime you start looking for recruiting trophies, uh, that just that's not our model. I know some schools that's their model. I'm, I'm not going to fault that. Uh, we go by what we like and what we see. I think we're uh, pounding our chest. We're probably as thorough um, as far as evaluating what guys fit into our system. And then, you know what? Once we see those guys, uh, you know we're aggressive on recruiting. We do a lot of uh, in-person evaluation, which we feel like is kind of lost in the art of. Uh, multimedia and huddle and all the uh, social media and things like that. So I think uh, we're really pleased with our evaluation. And, and I also do think this, though, uh, our program is in a different place than what it was uh, four or five years ago. I mean, there's a couple things that um, lend itself. One, a great consistency. We've got a lot of stability. Um, you have uh, three years of, of good records, not great records, but good records. While we were disappointed we didn't go to a bowl game this last year, we were bowl eligible. And certainly the high altitude training facility, is uh, it speaks well. When a young man walks into this facility, there's a, there's a message that's sent to them that they're coming into a big time football program and a big time athletic program. And so when you package all those elements together, I think that gives you an indication of maybe some of the guys that we've recruited against I know. Uh, in the back. Coach, can you talk about the, kind of a pipeline you've created to California and now Texas added to it? I know you spoke to it a little bit in, in December, but just has that just kind of maybe shown how the brand has grown with some of these young men? Um, well, one of the things about California that we have found, um, you know, some of the guys that have recruited out there have been in the same area uh, for several years. 
Uh, the, the Mountain West moniker plays well out there. We're on TV a lot. If you look at the number of schools that uh, are out there that play high school football, and it's good high school football, and then along with that, you combine that with the number of uh, colleges that play football in the state of California, that ratio is you know, pretty favorable for a school like us. <clears throat> uh, but what we have found is going to be really important for us. We went out with the uh, message of you know, the Wyoming profile, and we've been very intentional with our, um, with our intentions, what kind of guy we're looking for. And I think as each year has gone along, the coaches that have recruited California know which kind of guy is going to have an appeal for Wyoming and which kind of guy doesn't. And so uh, we've been much more strategic with our, with our plan. Uh, the state of Texas, uh, quite frankly, has exceeded my expectation. I had recruited uh, Texas uh, for about 15 years personally, and I know the previous staff here before we got here recruited Texas heavily and had tons of attrition. And I think in the combination of, uh, once again, how young men view the Mountain West Conference, uh, there's something about the state of Texas. I, I know I, I kind of joked with Mike Grant, who recruits Houston, I saw more pickups down in, in Houston that were four-wheel drive, dualies with uh, cattle guards in their downtown on I-10. It makes no sense, but they like trucks. And uh, so I think that there's some feeling of like in the Cowboys. And so uh, that with the combination of a lot of uh, connections that we've had and we rekindled those, that area turned out to be very uh, profitable, I would say. Yes? So when you look at the whole class, whether it be based on skill or mm -hmm. maybe positions of need, which guys can realistically, or do you expect to come in and maybe push for playing time? Well, there will be a couple that push for playing time, but I do think that the depth and breadth of the class uh, indicates that there's going to be each one of those guys is going to get a hard look, and I'm just that's not rhetoric. Uh, there's a lot of them that bring a lot to the table. Uh, our decision to play a freshman comes down to uh, three-pronged things. First of all, we, we need to have a, a positional need, and uh, the NCAA, when they modified the redshirt rule, being able to have four games, that will lend itself right away to some guys who may be more special team players. Um, then the next uh, component that you look at, do they have athleticism? Uh, are they athletic enough to be able to go out and compete and win at the Mountain West Conference level? The third component is uh, a component that many times gets lost in all this is their emotional maturity. They may, we may have a positional need. Uh, there, there may be a skill set that we could use, but you know, freshmen a lot of times just are not ready for the rigors of college football. I know when I played, freshmen were ineligible, and I think that there's still merit for that. Um, and so we'll make a measured decision which guys we play. That's sidestepping your, your question. I think your question is very valid, but I, I do want you to know we like the breadth and the athleticism without this throughout this class. Yes, Robert. Still Bill. have one scholarship mm -hmm. left. Yeah, yeah we have, you, you, the NCAA allows you to have 85 guys on scholarship and you can at the most sign 25 initials and so we still have a, uh, a 25th player. Uh, we will either look to sign that within our, within our current squad or a lot of times there's something that does become available, i.e. Uh, a late qualifier or sometimes a transfer. Into today's world with grad transfers, those are also out there. but. That is not something that we have targeted right now. Yes? Uh, Levi, getting in on him with mm -hmm. Houston making the coaching change, how, how did that happen? And right. Well, here's, a, here's a, you know, a case in point. We were just completing uh, our National Coaches Convention. There was a, a period where coaches could not go out. And uh, during that time, you know, I was in meetings and things of that nature. And, as opposed to returning back to uh, Laramie and then flying to Dallas, I chose just to stay in San Antonio and drive up. And uh, Brent Beacon had gotten in touch with me and said that he had been informed uh, that his high school coach had said that uh, there had been a coaching change at the University of Houston. Um, the match wasn't quite right. Um, and uh, would we be open at least to considering uh, Levi? And so before we did anything, it was going to be imperative for us to get released and Levi to be in the portal. Uh, what really was helpful also was as a young assistant coach, I think I was 29 years old, I was at the University of Wisconsin and recruited a, uh, we recruited a uh, option quarterback out of Texas City, Chris Ballard, who now is the general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. 
Well, his high school quarterback coach was Levi's high school quarterback coach. And so I had mentioned to Coach Vegan, I said, you know, my, my connections with a lot of the high school coaches are gone past. Most of the guys I know have now either retired or they're athletic directors. And lo and behold, uh, Coach Hill was a guy that there was a great connection. And matter of fact, I was on the phone with Chris Ballard today uh, from the Colts. And uh, so that really helped with the conduit. And then we got to find out, then we got the release. And as opposed to driving up to Dallas on Friday, Friday morning, I swung into San Antonio there and, and started the recruiting process. Uh, the stars aligned, right? We're really excited about Levi. Levi's excited about being here. So sometimes uh, it's better to be lucky than good. How much in person evaluation did you do with them? Uh, in, in, in none, no. none. And so I did, we did a lot of, uh, um, a lot of film evaluation, uh, but I can tell you that was one of the things that helped when you know a coach inside out. Uh, you know, I trusted a lot of the things that he said as far as his leadership, his competitive nature and things of, the, of that. They've had a lot of good players uh, in the past. And so it wasn't a whim, but to make no mistake, that, that recruiting process was not near as lengthy as thorough. But because of Coach Hill, and the uh, evaluation we did, we're confident that we, we hit a big time player. Okay, some questions maybe online. Okay, great job, Tracy. Yeah, <laughs> good answer. Hi, Coach. Yes. Uh, this is Miles Boyd from CBS News Channel 5. Uh, I know Parker Christensen signed uh, last signing day. Uh, how do you plan to use him? How is he fitting in the offense? Mm -hmm. He was a running back in high school and then making the transition to tight end. Right, uh, you know, when you think of a traditional tight end, uh, that's not really uh, Parker's skill set. Uh, if you if you uh, harken back to a couple years ago, when we had Jacob Hollister. Uh, you saw a guy that would line up in, in the tight end position occasionally. A lot of times we would move him uh, in the backfield, uh, release him downfield. Certainly he did some blocking, but he was a guy that could stretch the field and had great athleticism. And so that's kind of our role for him. Uh, so we're excited about Parker uh, fitting into that role. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions that are here today? Okay, yes. How, how, I know you've had Marcus and some other guys come at the start of walk on the walk your program. How important is that mm -hmm. to, to your program? What I think it's a, it's, a, it's a critical, critical part of our program. And, you know, walk ons are guys that uh, really add great value to our program. I personally was a walk-on at the University of Nebraska while I didn't play much. You know, it was a great experience for me and I felt like there was value that I had. Uh, and, and so what we have done is uh, we have uh, cast a pretty wide net, but we've been really honest with the guys that we have actively seek to come to the University of Wyoming uh, without a scholarship. And then um, what it does do, we found uh, some great uh, leadership. Uh, we've also found some really excellent players like Marcus and Garrett. You can go down the line. And then along with that, uh, the depth that uh, it brings to college football, you know, guys get injured. And as opposed to having to jerry-rig some things, you know, you have another player that can come in. And then the other thing that you'll find is, is time and time again, the guy who's heavily recruited, uh, you think they're going to be a great player. And you know what? For some reason, they don't pan out. And then the guy that maybe be the overachiever in high school comes in and really continues to work hard. He has great work habits in the weight room. He goes out and practices hard. He continues to get better. And one of the two things happen. Either the guy that's heavily recruited starts up in his game because somebody's pushing him, or they get beat out. And uh, you know the thing that we have told all our guys is, if you're good enough, you're going to play. We're going to evaluate every one of you. I think we watch more tape in practice uh, and scrimmages than most anybody else in college football. And so as a result, uh, the cream rises to the top. And so uh, what also is important, though, is, is if one of those guys reach that level that they deserve a scholarship, that's the very first place that we look to award a scholarship. And so um, we back up what we say, and that word spreads around. The one thing that, that we have found about the University of Wyoming, uh, people in this area appreciate being uh, plain spoken. They don't need bells and whistles. and you know, a, a quick sales guy. They just want somebody they can trust. And so, um, you know, our, our body of work as far as utilizing those non-scholarship players and them getting on the field and then being rewarded uh, 
scholarships has had a big, big impact, and that's one of the reasons why I think you're seeing those uh, records begin to, to get uh, moderated to where we're not having the big ebbs and flows.